What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to work with Xeron Premiere Pro. And just like my last tutorial, it's very similar to doing it with Assimilate Scratch, but this time I'm going to go a little bit more into the Premiere side of things. So personally, I like to edit in Vegas Pro, but some of you guys prefer Premiere, so that's what this tutorial is for. Hopefully you guys find it helpful. Let's get started. So first, you're going to want to go to this link that's down in the description below, same as last time. You're going to want to use this version v.0.6.6 that could fix some issues that I know you guys are having. But if it doesn't, uh, if you haven't tried 0.65, try 0.65. If you're still having issues, I would suggest contacting Zcam directly and talking with them because they're very, very good about responding to the community. Hopefully, they'll be able to get their software developers on the problem very quickly. So that being said... Go ahead and click for whichever one is applicable to you. For me, I'm on a Windows desktop, so I'll go ahead and click on that one. And I've already downloaded this, but you just right click, hit the download button, and it'll come down to your files. And whenever you get it, it's a zip, so you can extract it without software within Windows. And then it should be this one file right here. So you're going to double click on that, click next. Now, this could also be a point where you, you, where you all might struggle. Um, some of you, if you have multiple installations of Premiere of different versions and whatnot, or maybe you have an old install folder that still exists, it'll detect it, and you might end up having multiple options here. So if that's the case, then make sure you select the right one for you. For me, it's defaulted to this because I have the Adobe Premiere Pro 2024 edition, and it's the latest version, and I don't have any other editions on my computer so that's grayed out for me go ahead and click next install and it should install everything for you so once you do that you are actually good to go to work with zero so I'm going to go ahead and open up premiere and I'm going to just kind of make a, a new project a project that's just kind of whatever um, I'm just going to call it test and I'm going to put this here. Maybe call it test two. I've probably done a couple of these by now. Uh, I'm actually not going to create a new sequence. Okay. So I'm going to go over here to Window, Workspaces, go to whichever one. I mean, this part's personal preference. I'm, I just like to be in the assembly tab whenever I first start a project. So I'm gonna wait for Premiere to catch up because it's acting a bit slow for me today. There you go. It, for some reason, took me to, has essential graphics open. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and import some media. I actually have Z Raw clips on my camera should be right here. As you can see, I have a .zraw file extension. And I don't think you can actually see it here. Nope, you can. It's a zraw importer format. So I'm going to choose that. And I'm just going to pick a random clip. And you're done. You can drop it on the sequence, and now your Z-Rock clip has now been imported. And I've actually installed the color plugin as well, so I'm going to go to the color tab. And I also meant to show you this because a couple of you guys were asking about it. Um, Zcam does have LUTs that they have made for the cameras. Uh, I used the V1.8 for a while, and I liked it. Uh, they also have the V-Log LUTs for ProRes RAW, although I actually ended up using the true bounce the, the bounce color true log LUT pack I think it was um, I, I haven't linked in my last video but yeah I used I even though uh, I use Z log too I still like to use the V log LUT not quite sure why I just do um, I like the look that it gives me even though it's I guess technically incorrect to do it that way um, but I did actually download the updated 1.9 because I didn't even know that came out, but I did go ahead and download that. So just to kind of show you what that looks like, um, whenever you go to download it, it's just a Google Drive. You have Z flat, Z log 2. I'm not sure what Z flat is for. Maybe, I mean, I only own the, the E2C and the E2S6 Z cams. Maybe there's other Z cams that use 
Z flat, but mine only supports Z log two. So um, for me, I had the gain set to zero. So I can actually just go here into the input LUT, browse, go to where that is, which is right here. Yeah, these are the ones I use. Bounce color, true basic log conversion. I typically will use this Panasonic V-Log Direct 709 one. Gives me a nice look. That's the one I prefer to use. But for today, I'm just gonna go use the, Z, the Z-Cams one. So Z-Log 2, normal. I'm gonna use the ZRGB one right here. And it looks like that. And then you can you know, use desaturation um, if you want to desaturate it a little bit or would not, but I personally don't even use these. Um, but if you, if you want to use those, you can. And then it, it, if you have like overexposed, for example, you can use gain four if it's overexposed, but obviously mine was properly exposed. So I'm not going to do that. Um, now you can use those LUTs if you want to, but Zcam actually has a plugin now too. So if you go to effects, you can look up Z color Z. Where is it? Z cam Z log color. There we go. So I'm going to drag that onto my clip, and it actually does exactly what the other effect would have done. So I'm gonna toggle that off. I'm gonna put in the original LUT that I like to use, which is the Panasonic V-Log. This is what it looks like with the Panasonic V-Log LUT. And this is what it looks like with Zcam's Z-Log color plugin. It looks very, very similar. So the Z-Color plugin kind of handles that for you in a way. Um, the the bounce color ones give it a bit more it, it helps with the contrast quite a lot it helps with stretching the scope for your exposure but if you properly expose and you use the z-log tool anyways it should give you basically the same if not better results so obviously the input color space was z-log too um, but if you use z-flat then it'll end up looking like this but i'm going to keep the color to z-log2 because that's what it was and you can change all these other uh, settings if you want um, the temperature was actually set to 3300 kelvin so this is what it actually looked like whenever we were there in the shop so whenever you um, use this this tool it should end up changing some things and matching it and correcting it instead of using lumetric color you can just kind of correct it over here with the z log color utility and you can change the output color space too which is something i really really like so if i want to use alexa color space i can change it to use alexa's color space if i want to use reds i can change it to use reds um, although obviously that's not what i personally like to do if you want to output it back to z log 2 for some reason you could do that um, there's, like I said, there's all kinds of different workflows you could work with. Um, ACEs, if you want to do that for whatever reason. Um, like I said, you know, there's all different kinds. Personally, I choose to just go with Rec. 709. That's typically what I go with. And with that, we end up having a really, really good... I like this. I like this image right here. So yes, that's how you import ZRAW and then edit your ZRAW footage as well. Um, you can change things like gain if you want, which is just kind of your exposure. And for those that say ZRAW is, is just useless, it's basically H.265 because a lot of you guys in, this, in the group say it's not true raw. Yes, it's not true raw. However, it still gives you a lot more data to play with. And if you're a filmmaker like me, who likes to do a lot of advanced coloring, you might want to have that option, you know? So being able to have that option is, uh, is, is really nice to shoot with a lot more data for color because now I can, you know, go through and 
for example, go to color wheels and I can change my highlights. I typically go for warmer highlights. I'll go for kind of a green look here and then cool the highlights down a bit. And then hit it with some contrast. And then hit it with some vignette. You know, we could maybe even go to creative and put something here if we really wanted to, which, I mean, obviously that's way too much, but if I wanted to go with something like that, I could. So, you know, if, if, if I wanted to do this, I, like this isn't what is gonna be the final product of what I'm working on, of course, but if I wanted to shoot my footage and have it look like this, this would be completely acceptable. Um, and, and we've used the Z-Log color tool, but if we used H.265, the image would probably start to break down and it wouldn't look that great if we used H.265 after grading. And, and whenever you're doing workflows in something like Resolve or whatnot, you'll be able to push your footage a lot further than this with more advanced tools. Because Premiere Pro doesn't really have that advanced of a color workflow unless you start introducing plugins. But if you use DaVinci Resolve, it's it's basically designed as a color grading tool. So if you use Resolve and you're using the nodes, or if you're going to be doing 3D tracking and using Blender, for example, you're going to want RAW. Because even after RAW, you know, you're not going to be able to import RAW into Blender, but you can still transcode it and end up having a lot more video data to begin with. So hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. Excuse me. And uh, hope you guys have a wonderful day.